Good evening, members of council. Um, standard update this evening. First off, want to lead with economic development as usual. We're very, very pleased with the Allegheny Highlands Economic Development Corporation's rebranding efforts that are going really, really well. Um, and by that, I really can't emphasize how well it's received very, very positive press. I keep using a lot of emphasis. Um, you know, we got great press with WDBJ7. Um, Newswire picked it up. Um, actually, I just got word today that it was in Richmond Biz Sense, which is um, major business news and economic development for the metro um, Richmond area. So we're getting a lot of great positive free coverage on the rebranding of the Economic Development Corporation, but the actual news segment that's being shared as well is the um, pad site and what we're doing with product and industrial site development. So um, that's very exciting that we're being able to make some good progress in getting our name out there as a region. With regards to historic Main Street revitalization, very pleased to report that an option agreement for Project Sparkle was presented and executed um, by the IDA, to the IDA and executed by the IDA um, for a 12-month due diligence period to allow a developer um, to conduct any due diligence necessary for the building and to obtain financing for pre-approved uses, which include hospitality, retail, housing, lodging, as well as light manufacturing. Um, so any combination of those uses, those all fit um, with existing zoning and within the sort of parameters of what the Allegheny Foundation granted the building to be used for. Very pleased to also share that the developer is actually a resident of Falling Springs and has been involved in Main Street revitalizations before, namely with White Sulphur. So we'll be providing more information as we proceed with that, and I'm sure they'll be eager to come and talk with you all as well as talk with the IDA more. They were at the IDA meeting on Monday, and um, this developer actually did come to our community meeting at um, the Gordman's building uh, when we did our downtown plan reveal. So that is exciting news because we actually did just close on the building about four months ago. Took a long time to get that paperwork done. Um, Rivermont school redevelopment. Um, this is still going to continue to be a great benefit to the Rivermont neighborhood. Um, Firm confirmation was received from Landmark Development yesterday that they submitted their proposal for project-based vouchers um, to, for the RFP that Waynesboro Housing Authority has advertised on our behalf um, as Covington Housing Authority. Um, the confirmation was received at lunchtime yesterday. So they have submitted a proposal um, to the Housing Authority to obtain five project-based vouchers for senior housing for their project of redeveloping Rivermont School, which will then, um, if they are awarded those vouchers um, through the review process and however those, however they have set the scoring criteria, the housing authority, if they are awarded the vouchers, that will <laughs> nearly ensure that they are awarded the Virginia housing grant to then proceed with the $10 million development. Um, Pad site, also very exciting. The IFB for tree clearing was sent out yesterday and it was posted for bid. One bid was already um, inquired about today. We had a local logger come in and request to get a copy of the bid package and um, so that they may respond. It was sent to three local loggers and it was posted on EVA, the state procurement site, and we will be ad running ads in the paper um, tomorrow and Saturday, as that's our um, media of record and our you know, sort of procurement spiel with that. Construction administration um, contract addendum was also signed yesterday by the IDA to begin moving forward with turning dirt, which will be targeted for end of February, very beginning of March. Um, after the trees are cleared, or sorry, late February, beginning of March. Late March, beginning of April? Depends on with the tree clearing. They've bumped it out just trying to give a buffer for weather. Um, so late March, early April. Um, April 1st is when all of the trees have to be down. That is um, because of an endangered species potential of bats. Potential. We didn't see any. But it could, it's a habitat that could house endangered species of bats. That's right. 
Um, but the, the construction administration contract was signed. Um, that contract value is actually at forty thousand dollars. That will give Timmins Group the ability to provide contract um, monitoring of the construction work that occurs. They will handle the bid process for the actual contractors to turn the dirt, grade out the site, and do the monitoring of any sort of QA, QC that needs to occur. So reasonable price with that. Also, the second plan submittal was received today. So they are right on time and on schedule with submitting plans, moving forward with bid processes, and all that. So. They have worked to address the first round of comments, so hopefully in the next 14 to 21 days we'll get that plan feedback um, back for that second submittal, and then that will enable us to go and put out um, a contract for bid for contractors to then engage and begin earthwork, so get those folks lined up too. Major projects, I don't have any major update at this time on Rayon Bridge. I'm awaiting information from VDOT at this time. With regards to our EQ basin, the IFB was an invitation for bid was sent to our pre-qualified bidders. We are waiting to um, obtain responses back. Maple Avenue Phase Three. I had a meeting with, along with staff, as far as department heads last week on Thursday with VDOT. The city plans to submit um, its plan re plans for review, the 90% complete plans. Um, in conjunction with Hurt and Profit within the next two weeks, and VDOT has committed to a two-week plan review turnaround time. So based on that, we hope to advertise this project before late February. That way then we can have a ward um, mid-spring mid and start work during the spring and hopefully wrap in a timely fashion. That's one of our goals. Um, joint service efforts, inmate housing, the jail resolution that you all acted on um, has now been signed and adopted by all the localities involved. So it is being sent to our state delegation. Um, also, we have work underway to finalize the regional jail facility assessment RFP. Um, we had added some additional language, um, Rockbridge County and myself, after having some discussions over our luncheon. Um, right before Christmas of just wanting to make sure we gave very clear guidance to what we're looking for for the facility assessments. Um, service efforts, wanting to apprise you all of the IFB for Nettleton, the invitation for bid for that demo. Um, we had the pre-bid meeting was held last week, so we're working to move on engaging a contractor to start the mobilization of um, getting the derelict property that we have unfortunately held um, removed. One thing to make you all aware of is that the recycling site may be impacted by um, the demolition efforts um, due to the proximity of where they're going to be working. So we will likely have to have, once they start heavy demolition work, the recycling site closed Monday through Friday and have it only open on Saturdays and Sundays um, to ensure the safety of folks wanting to come and recycle. And for instance, that you know we have a clean site. You know we will hold the contractor responsible for making sure Friday, you know, three thirty, four o'clock when they're rolling out, that the adjacent area is free of debris so that folks can come and recycle. I have um, spoken with my colleague in the county um, about this and. Um, have made them aware that this is a potential service impact. Initially, we were trying to think of if we could open it after 3 p.m. till dusk. It just doesn't seem that it's going to be feasible. So it just seems that once we start rolling on that, that it'll just be Saturdays and Sundays that the site is open. Um, we don't really have another feasible option. It costs money um, to relocate the compactor bin in of itself due to the electrical. Um, as you all remember, we had Dominion out there doing special wiring and running the um, voltage that was necessary for the compactor. Um, we had discussed looking at um, recycling bins again. Um, the challenge with bins is, as you all know, they fill up very, very quickly and they are very costly and, um, as far as hauling. That When we had just bins, we were hauling once, sometimes twice a week, two to four bins. So we ate through our budget. So fortunately, we'll have to ask people to be kind and please bring your stuff on the weekend. It'll be a secure site though, so you won't be able to actually access it once when the contractor's working. Apologies. We'll have to uh, 
we will be putting out a PSA and yes traffic yes sir and we will be working on making sure we put out several public service announcements and making sure that we make folks, um, at least uh, our, my colleagues in Allegheny County and Clifton Forge, aware of this. Um, does, uh, does Clifton Forge have a same <laughs> system yet? They, were, they, they have their bins. They are still working on full deployment of a compactor. Um, Apologies. I know I love recycling. But I think it's important that we're also focused on the end goal, too, of being better stewards of our own property while we're also encouraging our citizens and businesses to take care of theirs. So the end result will be worth it. Yes. Um, another exciting news is um, we're working on a pavement condition index assessment. Um, I mentioned that with you all a few months back with regards to um, assist, um, coming up with a method to assist with paving project selection for prioritization and surface application. We actually um, are using uh, budgeted funds that we have within um, between um, various areas to kick off a actual real PCI assessment of all city maintained roads, those that are VDOT funded as well as those that are just city sole responsibility so that we can come up with what is the rating of each street and how we can better um, maintain them and come up with, as you alluded to earlier, needing um, depreciation um, information. So not just saying, well, we know it's been a really long time since something's been paved, that we will have information of when it was last paved, what's the best surface treatment for it, whether it's slurry seal, whether it's mill and overlay, um, those kinds of things. And we'll be also working to put that information in GIS so we will have reliable visual um, information as well. Um, so we're excited for that. We'll be using Timmins Group for that information um, and very, very cost-effective quote that they gave in with the ability to build on to the data that they will generate for us. Um, last but not least, I have two other items. Chestnut, um, our sinkhole, has been sealed um, with temporary work. Um, approximately, um, there was about 14 feet linear feet of storm drain pipe that was replaced. Um, a con and it was done with concrete jointed at the depth of approximately 17 feet. 200 tons of gravel were used with a fill of 15 feet. And we did this um, per VDOT standards with the milling and the capping of the site. Um, the pipe and the film material were provided by the city. The approximate cost was about $4,200. And we used Hammond, um, HMI um, for the emergency repair uh, for about $12,800. So all in, it was just a little over $17,000. Um, but again, I'd like to reiterate that you know there was 14 feet of pipe that had to be replaced that was completely collapsed. We actually found, as I mentioned last week, a manhole that we did not know existed that was under multiple inches of pavement. And we had to excavate 17 feet down and backfill a substantial portion of that. Um, and just a brief update, I really want to shout out our folks, Parks and Recreation and Public Works, that did our snowstorm response. Um, bang up job with that, especially since we had challenges with pre-application um, before the storm uh, due to the forecast calling for rain. Um, so we kind of struggled to make sure we were going to stay ahead of the eight ball, so to speak. We plowed and salted. Um, all city roads Thursday and Friday, the initial response. Um, was with a crew of six drivers and one mechanic working a total of two shifts um, and we plowed all corridors and had a total of four passes on all of our main roads. We had approximately 428 road miles plowed with 80 tons of salt applied to all roads. So that was a lot of work by our folks working around the clock so if you see them tell them thanks they did a good job. Um, glad we had the rain to wash away the residual salt but our roads were in great condition. So that's it. Any questions?